How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? You're listening to the RightOutdoors.com podcast. No, baby, you dig it the most. Podcast about hunting, fishing, and everything else outdoors. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious I'm your host, Ron Hustovic, outdoor writer, photographer, and founder of RightOutdoors.com. Well, that right there may be the reason you had difficulty finding gainful employment. Covering tips and tactics from the outdoors experts, both in the studio and out in the field. Damn, we're in a tight spot. So without further ado, here's the show. That would be great. Thank you for that lovely tune. That funky music will drive us till the dawn. Early goose hunts coming up real soon here, Jeff. What's your what's your approach? What how do you like to set up and get ready for your early goose? Well, hunt? I like to do a lot. Early goose hunting takes a lot of scouting, and um, you know, after scouting, it's very important. You know, the day before you go out there, that you got that the X, you're on the X in that field, because those geese are out there for one reason. They're out there to eat, you know, and uh, they eat those fields out, you know. And you got if you're not on the X, it's gonna be a little tough and a short shot. Right. So you gotta make sure you're on that field where they're gonna land. Right. It's like kind of hard to traffic them, isn't it? It's hard to get them. Well, it's a little tough to traffic geese, and, and uh, you can't. It can be done with a lot of decoys, a lot of calling, a lot of flagging. It can be done if you're not in that field that they want to be. But it's a heck of a lot easier if you can get on the field. You know, and when you're in that field, that's very important to find exactly where they're at in that field and get on the X. Because if not, they'll just short stop you and right light on the outside of your decoy, okay. which makes it pretty tough on everybody. Yeah, exactly. How do you like to do your setup as far as how big of a spread do you do? Well, most of the time, versus... you know, we're hunting, you're hunting a flock from 75 to 150 geese. And uh, when they first come in there, I think a lot of people make a mistake by putting that many decoys out. And uh, I usually hunt about 36 decoys in that situation. Okay. And I'll, you, most of the time, I'll put them in little family groups and like a few uh, like standard like decoys or ones are like centuries walking from one patch to the other yep. and make and make sure you got a really really good pocket right in front of you uh, right in front of you to make them a real nice uh, landing hole okay. how big are the family groups you put about five or six in the four five group? six okay. you know four five six and pick out your 36 best looking decoys that you have to take out there because those geese is, you know, the young ones are pretty dumb, but the mom and dad's pretty smart out there and they're looking out for them young ones. And if things aren't right, you know, and one of the things I think we make the biggest mistake of all is we watch these geese day in and day out and they're in that field out there every day without us. And the only thing we do by being there is screw it up. Exactly. And I think that, you know, camouflaging better, you know, we've got a Every good product in the world's out today. We got the best of blinds, best of camouflage, calls, decoys. It's not hard to get any better than it is. But the problem is, there's not. You don't have that edge like we used to. You know, one guy'd have be a better caller, and this guy'd have a better equipment. Everybody's got good equipment anymore, and most of these guys here at Game Fair are awesome callers. <laughs> so that comes up here. Okay. You need to do a lot of calling early season, or I don't think so. There's sometimes, you know, if you're hunting those traffic geese, yeah, you're going to have to. You have to do a lot of calling. But if they're coming that field every day, I think it's the worst thing you can do. You need to do some little clucks, some soft moans, a few feeding growls, and that's just about it. Maybe if you hit that flag a couple times, yeah. that's about all you need to do. Okay. How about if you're trafficking? What's it's what kind of calling stuff would you do for that? Well, basically, I put a lot, a lot of birds out, a lot of decoys out, and then I'll reach in the trailer instead of getting three dozen decoys, I'll get 10 or 15. And I'll put a lot of decoys out, get hit really good. I'll do a lot and a lot of flagging. Have everybody that's in my party have a flag if they can, to flag the geese down to get their attention, to get them off that, you know, to break that route that they're going through, and a ton of calling. I'll to call really hard, really fast until they make that turn. And when they make that turn to come into me, then I'll just start getting real with them again and, and just start with nice, soft flucks and moans if, they, if they've committed. How about later on in that, still talking about that September, early season time period, as you get later, they start getting smarter, a lot of the other ones are They start getting smarter, dead. and also, you know, we start getting, uh, migrators start coming. Yep. And it's, at the end of that season, you know, a lot of, you know, I know sometimes fish and wildlife don't want to believe that, but in biologists, but there's a lot of migrators coming. Yeah. And we get into the migrators, and then when they do, you're going to have to get your numbers back up. But if you're something those same geese day in and day out in those same fields, it does get tougher, and you're going to have to get more realistic every day. Hide your blinds better. You're going to have to, um, you know, 
move around in spots in that field if that's the only field you got, or you're going to have to start trying to get permission on fields where the, when you burn them out of one field and they go to the next, you're going to have to try to get permission on that. That's very important. Right. Okay. All right. Anything else as far as what sort of? Well, I think one thing you know we don't do is uh, we all have to win. And other than a win, when you pull into a field, you know, you need to know where the sun's going to be, according to that one. And they need to use the sun to your advantage, you know, get that sun at your back, and it comes up in the east every day. So if you've got a south wind, you put your back to the, I would put my back to the sun, and if the south wind, I'd put uh, uh, my family groups around to my left side towards the south, and I'd shoot the geese go right, you know, as they come into right into the wind. That sun will do you more good than anything, and they'll start listening to your call more because they're blinding. So I use the sun a lot. Another thing I do is, is when I come into the field in the morning, before I get into the field, and I drive right on out to the field where, where I text. Before I do that, field figure out which way it is, and then I'll park my truck and trailer up the wind. So we're not messing up all the weed stubble and all there without us. Just a little bit gun when they come in. You know, they're going to get and they're going to, you know, about it. That's the number one thing and not messing anything and making everything look exactly where there's least for the floor. I have brand new blinds. And don't go get caught if you're on a weed field. I see a lot of people the night before, you know, have a little party and get ready and talk about the hunt. I'll take a bale of straw and get all everything ready. And, Never and, know, uh, do you? One of the things that I think what will happen is that straw bale has been picked a week ago and it might have green on it makes it more dense. Use, the, the use of whatever covers in that field that you're going to hunt. And don't take the cover from around the blinds. Everybody throws the blinds down usually and starts grabbing for straw or whatever. Next thing you got a big black hole where you just pull it from. Right. The blinds look awesome, but now they're sitting on about some, uh, whether it's corn, whether it's, whether it's wheat, whatever, they'll kick out of the back of the combine when it makes a turn. I always take a couple garden rakes in my trailer, a hay rake, and a couple shovels in case I have to take my blind out. But rake up a bunch of stuff, bring it up, put it all around in your decoy, in your final, I mean in your uh, uh, stubble straps, put it all in your stubble straps, get your blind looking really good, hide them really well. When you get all your decoys placed, take the rest and just kind of drop it all around where you've been walking and prancing around your blind all morning. And stay hit. That's, that's the best thing I can do. Okay. All right. Appreciate it, Jeff. Okay. Thanks a lot, man. All right.